In this episode of the Leadership Speak series, I speak with Sunit Verma, world-renowned fashion and style guru. Sunit Verma is one of the rare creative geniuses who confidently took on the challenge of building a hugely successful business in the fashion industry. In his early career, Mr. Verma quit a highly desired job with fashion brand YSL in Paris to return to India and start his own entrepreneurial firm. This might seem to be an incredibly risky career move for a 21-year-old. But as you will see in this interview, Sunit Verma firmly believes that without taking risks, one will remain mediocre and can never make a mark in life. Mr. Verma's life gives us a peek into the glamorous world of the high fashion industry and also the business side of the fashion industry. It is full of valuable life lessons and examples that youngsters and early career seekers will find useful, especially to those of us who are deciding between choosing a safe career or trying something more risky and exciting. So let's go right ahead and hear Sunit Verma's glamorous leadership story in the seventh episode of Leadership Speaks. So my first question for you is, would you classify yourself as an entrepreneur or a fashion designer or an entrepreneur who is in the fashion industry? So I think, well, I'm trained as a fashion designer and I've done my master's degree from Europe and uh, I've studied costume history and I've studied design and I've studied uh, textiles and color theory, principles of design. So I'm actually a trained fashion designer. Uh, with a degree, uh, with a master's degree, and had I been had I been an employee somewhere, because I was offered a job at Yves Saint Laurent in Paris, and if I'd continued to stay there after my internship, then I would have just been a fashion designer. But because I decided to come back to India and start set up my own company and start my entire business, which is retail stores, consulting work, shows and projects, which are actually then driven as a business alongside the design. Uh, so I would call myself a fashion designer who's also an entrepreneur. That's a great take on it. And that leads, to me, that, that leads me to my next question. Just before starting yes. a brand in India, you provided your expertise for a year at YSL. Instead of coming yeah. there, what made you risk everything and start a brand in India when made to order was barely recognized? Well, um, couple of things. A, I, you know, I, I didn't speak French fluently and that was very important to, uh, for a job, a uh, permanent job at Yves Saint Laurent. Uh, even though they were very happy to have me because Saint Laurent was then at that point working on his India inspiration. So I was a big source of textiles and color and just, you know, the, the inspiration behind that collection. So I would collate all that material for him. Um, Secondly, um, both my brother and sister at that point also lived in Europe and uh, my parents needed one of us back. So I decided to come back and, and my father used to always say, you know, um, made to measure for pleasure is, is really an Indian idea. And uh, I think made to measure for pleasure is essentially the very essence of couture. So I decided that I would actually come back to India and take that as an inspiration and build my business on that. I think that's very interesting and very different. And as you are a creator of new trends every year. How do you come up with these inspirations for your outfits, for your new trends that you make? I mean, you don't even see half of it, Rehan. <laughs> you know, uh, we were constantly working. Uh, I've just finished my couture show on the 23rd of August. 
and we're not even two weeks away and I'm already working on the next collection for November. So I think if, you're, if you love your work, which I do, I'm very, very, I'm, I'm actually one of those very privileged people um, who loves what they do, which is part of their hobby. And then I've actually been able to make a business and earn money and earn a life out of it. And, you know, God has been very kind with the fame and the fortune and all of that. So for me, I'm constantly working. So even if I'm not doing a fashion week, so we do, we do a spring summer fashion line. We do a fall winter fashion line. We do Lackner fashion week. We do couture week. And in between we do some other, projects like I'll do a lot of events with BMW or with Swarovski or internationally in Hong Kong and Singapore but I feel like you know I constantly work um, and, I, and I somehow don't feel the pressure and neither do I feel overworked or overtaxed because I love what I do so for me it's a very natural uh, process. Right I think when you have a passion and you love your job it doesn't really feel like something that has that is that's not fun to do and when you love your job and you have passion for it you want to do it you feel like doing it you want to do it and you want to you want to constantly do it and you want to constantly better yourself and actually while you're trying to better yourself you also constantly want to learn there is so much to be learned Rehan you know there's 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 different cultures there's different you know embellishments and embroideries and there's a whole treasure of textiles in the world over, just within India as well, you know? I mean, there is so much to be learned. Like today, I, you know, I, I made a pitch for a project in, in, um, in uh, Netherlands. I've never been there. I've always been fascinated by the craft. I've always been fascinated by the textiles. I've always been fascinated by their food, their lifestyle. And it's not a place that I'm usually taken to. I'll usually either board a flight to Europe or I'll be going to Mumbai and Calcutta or Banaras at best, you know? This is an incredible opportunity to learn something new. And even though it may not necessarily mean a lot commercially, I may not end up making a lot of money off of it. But I think in terms of what I learn from it will be far more valuable. So I like to you know, structure my work in such a way that there's a very interesting balance in terms of what I do for commercial entrepreneurship and what I do to just satisfy my soul. Right. I think having that balance is imperative. Because you do need to do a lot of work, but at the end of the day, you do have to make yourself happy in what you do and you have to have a passion for your job. So my next, question, I... so my yes. next question for you is, one of my favorite quotes was by Winston Churchill. He said, success is walking from failure to failure with no loss of enthusiasm. What is one quote you really resonate with and, has, and you feel has helped you in your design and entrepreneurial expedition? Well, two actually. <laughs> One is um, uh, uh, there is no substitute for hard work and discipline. It's very simple. You know, if you work hard, you will be successful. If you discipline yourself, you will see the results. You know, so there is no substitute for hard work and discipline. And the other one um, is uh, because I don't know how much you know about my brand, but my brand is very young and it's very sexy and it's very sensual and it, it, it celebrates women and it celebrates romance and a little bit of mystery so i always say that you know fashion is the politest way of talking about sex and sensuality because you know when when a girl is wearing a beautiful gown with you know with uh, in a halter with her beautiful back there is something very sensual and what she is saying the, because clothes actually speak um what you wear and how you wear it and how your body moves in this clothes speak a lot about you before you say your first word, you know? So if a girl is wearing a beautiful gown, you know, in a halter neck and her back is seen or it's beautiful, it, it also talks about how she maintains herself, how toned she is. You know, it's like when, uh, when people wear short dresses or men wear tight t-shirts, there is a very, it's a, it's a politest way of talking about sensuality and sex as well. Um, and and uh, I've actually taken that idea and I've actually built that uh, almost as a brand entity within my brand. Right, correct. I think that is basically what fashion is. And your clothing is used for extravagant events as well as weddings. In the past year, due to the pandemic, we've seen a major shift in everything. How do you plan to adapt for the future? So... Um... 
Uh, it's interesting, actually. It's a two-part answer, uh, especially now since the pandemic has kind of almost petered off. So we're actually in the endemic now, which is the end of the pandemic, kind of. Um, I think that, uh, you know, people were talking about, will there be a revenge buying? Uh, there is no revenge buying, but I'll tell you, there is something which I've been noticing. There is something called revenge celebrating because people have been so put off by the pandemic and so cowed down by its restrictions in terms of what they could do, 50 people wedding or 100 people wedding or no wedding or cancel the wedding and postpone the wedding, not once, not twice, thrice sometimes. I think people are in a mood to really celebrate. So we've not had to kind of do cheaper clothing or less extravagant clothing because people still want to celebrate. And you know, what will happen is that a girl who's getting married now, who's in her late twenties or mid twenties, 15 years from now, people will have forgotten the pandemic 20 years from now, but the memory of her wedding photograph will remain forever. You know, she's going to look at that. Like I'm sure your mother looks at her wedding photographs and say, Oh, I wore this and how nice I looked and how young I was. And I'm sure, you know, I think the, the wedding, the wedding, Photographs. I mean, there's, there's photographs of my brother and sister's wedding, which was 25 years ago, still on the wall in my house, you know? Um, so those are the memories that remain forever. So I think people are still looking to celebrate, uh, wear extravagant clothing. Maybe they wouldn't buy 10 outfits as they used to. <coughs> Maybe they'll buy three, but they still want them very, very precious. I think that's a very different view of point than lots of people after the pandemic. I think everybody thinks, oh, we won't buy, we won't do this. But actually, if you really think about it, people are buying the same amount or not even the same amount, but they are still buying like they used to because I think everyone's been stuck in their homes. Not buy eight and ten things, but they'll definitely buy four and five, which will be equally precious or even more precious. It's like almost like a revenge celebration. <laughs> yeah. So what is one thing you wish you had known before starting your career and that you regret not learning at an earlier age or a younger age? Well, I'm actually very happy for all the learnings. So I don't really regret anything. But yes, um, I think, you know, the very fact that I was very young when I started, you know, I think I was old, almost only 21 when I started my own business and that's a very young age to start businesses, you know, and I didn't come from a business background. So uh, I would say I learned everything on the job, you know, whether it was um, everything from taxation to, you know, company structures and factory licenses. I mean, those are legal things which I was not necessarily trained for, but I'm much smarter now. I feel than a lot of people because I actually learned everything on the job you know, as a young entrepreneur. Um, so actually, I don't regret anything, no. Right. You definitely learn some things. That you learn along the way. Whatever you learn, you keep in mind. And yeah, right. definitely. definitely. You've designed clothes for many famous artists, people, which is one of your most fun and memorable experiences. movies I worked with you know the Ritik Roshans of the world and Priyanka Chopra's and Deepika Padukone is a friend and I do I still you know do a lot of work with some of the uh, actors and actresses um, but I've also had a lot of international collaborations so you know I did the Judith Lieber collection Judith Lieber is the uh, world's best known uh, bejeweled handbag company and it's actually one of the top brands in America and I was their creative director for almost four years and I did a lot of work with them. I did a lot of collections. So, you know, we did handbags for Jennifer Lopez, for the, for the Met Gala, we, you know, for Mariah Carey, uh, for one of the Emmys, we did stuff with, uh, I mean, so it was, it, it's a very different kind of exposure. Um, my work within India would obviously be connected to, you know, to some amount to Bollywood. So I wouldn't consider that the only novelty. I would say the international, um, exposure and to be working with the A-list celebrities from Hollywood would actually be the uh, more premier moments in my career. Definitely. I mean, working with such celebrities that you look up to is extremely fun and memorable. Yeah. It's a great experience. In all the sex in the city with Sarah Jessica Parker, right. um, 
did uh, stuff for many, many, many international celebrities. Yes. Right. So my last question for you was, what is your number one tip for youngsters like me who wish to be entrepreneurs when they grow up? I think, you know, uh, it's really important to, to take risks. Because if you don't take a risk, you'll never know what's on the other side, you know. Um, and that, that whole idea of the grass is green on the other side uh, is actually true. Because sometimes the grass is green on the other side. You only have to step to the other side to know it, you know. And, and if it's not green enough, then that's fine. You, you'll find another pasture. But I feel like if you don't take risks uh, in design, in thought, in inspiration, in execution, if you don't try and think outside the box and try and do things differently, um, you'll never be able to make a mark. Um, many of us actually just want to live in very structured lives, you know, which is the nine to five or a family business and fall back on that and, you know, live, live a decent life. But I wouldn't say it would be an exemplary life. It would not be something that you would have created for yourself, by yourself. You know, uh, I think that 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 fire, that fire, uh, only is possible if you actually take risks and have an entrepreneurial mind mindset. And you you can make that shift. You know, right. So it's really that you actually, Rehan, even you yourself as a young person. You actually hang with people who have similar mindsets, you know. Um, it's actually a lot to do with, so, you know, I grew up uh, in, a, in a fairly modest uh, Punjabi uh, home, you know. And all of my cousins and everybody are beyond super successful. You know, one is heading some massive Microsoft kind of company in America, and, you know, one is forever living in a Concord, you know, uh, my brother's very successful in what he does. My sister runs Emirates. And I think this is it. When you're, when you're hang with a bunch of people who have, who kind of inspire each other and then your ideas, inspiration wrap off of each other, you end up being successful. So don't hang with losers. Very important. <laughs> right. I think risk taking is essential for all entrepreneurs to have to do. And you have to be a risk taker to succeed and also have to have passion for your job and love what you do. Definitely, definitely. Okay, so that ends it. And thank you so much for agreeing to this. And I had a great time. Thank you. Good luck. Thank Bye. you. And this concludes my chat with fashion guru and global brand icon Sunit Verma. Here are two of my key learnings. First, success comes to those who find a balance between what makes commercial sense and what satisfies your soul. Making a commercially available business out of our passion is no easy task. It requires taking big risks and staying disciplined and focused till we see the results. Second, hang out with people who inspire each other to succeed. It's very important to find a group of people who share the same drive and passion to succeed as you. Negativity and bad influences can pull us down but hanging out with a positive peer group can keep us motivated and prevent us from going down the wrong path. This is the seventh in a series of my interviews with business leaders and people who have achieved success in their lives. If you enjoyed watching, please do hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. I'll be releasing my next Leadership Speak podcast very soon. Till then, think positive, have big goals and focus on the road ahead.